can't help but not play around with the play button. Anyway, enough dinking around with this. Let's get on with the video already. Good day, folks. Jordan here. Welcome to another software overview video. Today we're exploring Ubuntu 7.04 Feasty Fawn, released on the 19th of April 2007. Now this release is obviously a lot more exciting than Ubuntu 6.10 in the fact that there's actually some new features that we can explore. Well, maybe not all of them, but some nice things that are new to the Ubuntu user experience from 6.10, such as a new migration assistant for users of Windows. So, you know, if somebody wants to go from using Microsoft Windows over to Ubuntu, that's the utility that they now have access to, to where they can transfer all their files and settings potentially over to Ubuntu. There is a new kernel-based virtual machine support, and I'm not sure if that has something to do with like Java virtual machine or if that's got something to do with something else entirely. I know for a fact that there's a difference between like Java virtual machine and a, like a regular like virtual machine that you might think about as like VMware or VirtualBox or something like that. There is a new assisted codec and restricted driver installation uh, process. I, I don't know if that's inside of the setup. We'll have to explore that when we install the operating system. But it, thing, it does things like Adobe Flash and Java and then of course your typical drivers like the uh, like the kernel drivers, I think, for Intel CPUs or something like that. Not entirely sure about that on the hardware we're going to be using for this video. There's now MP3 support. There is also easy installation of ATI and NVIDIA graphics drivers because I believe previously they were kind of fishing. They didn't quite work right. There's also support for WPA on wireless, such as, of course, WPA, WPA2. Of course, if you don't know what WPA stands for, that means Wi-Fi Protected Access. So it's just a more secure Wi-Fi connection. A lot of routers nowadays, they require that you set your connection to WPA or WPA2 or something like that. Otherwise, they complain at you. There's also new Compiz desktop effects. We'll see if I can dig those out. There's also a couple of new games, which are Sudoku and Chess. So we'll explore those, I suppose, if there's any interest in that. There's also a new disk usage analyzer program. I forget what it's called, but not like it really matters too much. That's a new application or applet, I suppose. And there's also a new genome or gnome control center, which I'll see if I can find that as well. I believe that's inside the operating system and it's, and it's you know, it stands out. Now there's an unfortunate side effect to this new version and that is that there was no more PowerPC support. As it turns out actually, and I looked this up myself to confirm this, so let's check this out real quick. On Ubuntu's download page for Ubuntu 7.04, as you can see, there is no more PowerPC download option here. Whereas if I go back to the previous release, which was Edgy Eft, there is a Mac PowerPC option. And I believe the reason that they transitioned was because of Apple's transition from PowerPC to Intel. So there's no point in supporting the PowerPC stuff. However, uh, this is a pretty interesting thing that I found out. There is still a fork of Ubuntu, at least as far as I'm aware, there's a fork of Ubuntu that's still being produced by some group or something or another. Maybe there's some alternative developments going on where they actually have made uh, alternative downloads of Ubuntu or Kubuntu or Edubuntu or whatever the releases of Ubuntu you find, or even Lubuntu and Zubuntu or Xubuntu. I don't know why you pronounce that one, but anyway. So my guess is that there's been some other projects, other developers working on a PowerPC fork of modern Ubuntu that still runs on PowerPC. And as far as I know, uh, which one was it? Uh, Yakety Yak 16.10, there was a PowerPC port of that operating system that they that was actually released. I don't know if I'm going to ever get around to checking that out because I don't know if it's worth my time to dig up my Power Mac G5 and check it out, but maybe. But I just figured that was worth noting here on the video. So what is now tradition for these videos? Let's go ahead and explore the old website from when Ubuntu 7.04 was the main big attraction. The power of open source on your laptop, desktop, and server. Smart, secure, easy. Well, easy for sure, because Ubuntu had a pretty easy installation process at the time. 
Their website has certainly gotten a little bit better compared to Ubuntu 6.10. It's a lot more friendly looking, I guess, and a lot more professional looking. It's more or less designed for higher resolution monitors as well, which is pretty nice to see. And they also summarized what is Ubuntu as, Ubuntu is a community-developed Linux-based operating system that is perfect for laptops, desktops, and servers. It contains all the applications you need, a web browser, presentation, document, and spreadsheet software, instant messaging, and much more. And of course, there's the Ubuntu promise down here, which talks about its openness, its free nature, and all that. And we can explore the desktop edition here, which should have some new fun looking pictures and so on and so forth, once it loads, of course. So as you can see, this looks a little bit different. And what's interesting is they also show the Ubuntu sort of ship it CD up here in this image. I wonder if there's actually any of these still out there. I'd be so interested to see if that's the case. I don't know if I'd ever buy one, but it still would be kind of neat to see if those are actually are still around. And apparently Ubuntu was live in Portland, Oregon from the 22nd to the 24th of July, 2007. I also wonder if somebody's actually recorded that because Portland, Oregon is actually not that far away from where I live. Well, that's subjective, of course, if you think 100 some odd miles is a far away distance or not very far away distance, I don't know. But that's very interesting. I wonder what they presented there. They must have presented the uh, capabilities of Ubuntu and some of the new features of the latest release or something like that. I couldn't really tell you. So that's very interesting. Anyway, um, you can see it talks about its accessibility, software updates, um, support, all that stuff. Just kind of briefly talks about the operating system and also uses the background from 6.06. .06. They still haven't changed that, which is very interesting. What's also interesting is they talk about the derivatives over here on the side, so I wonder what they have on Kubuntu here real quick, just out of curiosity. Ooh, look at that KDE desktop environment. Uh, if anybody wants me to make a separate series talking about Kubuntu and its development process cycle, let me know down below in the comment section, because I think that'd be pretty neat. We could take a look at that in its own little separate series. So, I don't know. That's up to you guys. Anyway, that's it for now for the Ubuntu website. So let's go ahead and get to installing this. Now, unfortunately, there is a pretty disappointing side effect to this, and that is I cannot do this in a virtual machine. Now, I don't know if it's just because of the fact that I have the 64-bit disk image or if it's just VMware. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, but I try to go and boot the live disk, and it looks like it's going to work, as you'd see right now, but it tends to freeze right there. And as you can clearly tell, it's... Uh, broken. So, unfortunately, I'm not able to do this in a virtual in a bleh, English Jordan, can you speak it? Um, I'm not able to do this in a virtual machine. So, what I have done is I've made a bootable USB stick and I've actually got a surrogate computer of which we're going to check out Ubuntu 7.04 in unfortunately crappy freehand camera style, so you're just going to have to deal with it. But regardless, let's go ahead and explore Ubuntu 7.04. So we're going to be installing Ubuntu 7.04 on an IBM ThinkPad T43 with the attack of the dog. I don't know where she's going, but okay. This computer has an Intel Pentium M clocked at 1.86 gigahertz. It is one of the later Pentium M's, hence the dropped E on the Intel logo. And it also has two gigs of DDR2 RAM, as well as an ATI, I think it's a Mobility Radeon X300 dedicated graphics card and the high resolution 1400 by 1050 display. So this is what we're going to be using to check out Ubuntu 7.04. I might just have to, oh God, I forgot. This thing does not like the hard drive it has in it. So unfortunately, every time you get past the BIOS, it beeps like that. It's very annoying. Anyway, because I'm booting this off of this, of course, it's not going to give me the nice menu, but it is what it is. But as you can clearly see it now, will boot up properly, which is awesome. So I'm gonna come back once this boots up because it does take a bit. This is real hardware after all, so it is gonna take at least a minute or so to start up off the USB stick. So I'll come back once we're at the desktop. All right, and here we are at the desktop of Ubuntu 7.04's live CD. I know the text is quite small. This, like I said, is the high resolution display. 
So what I'm gonna go ahead and do first is get this installed for a start. Uh, I'm gonna wipe out the old Windows install on this hard drive just because I was trying to update the BIOS, which was unfortunately unsuccessful. So I don't care about formatting the hard drive and running this off of the hard drive. So as you can see, the setup process looks a little bit different comparative to 6.10 in that it has the English thing off to the side there and it gives you a little bit more of a descriptive message here saying, ready to install? Once you answer a few questions, the contents of the live CD can be installed on, the, on this computer so you can run the system at full speed and without the CD, which it's not running off a CD, it's installed off of a, or running off a USB stick. Answering the questions should only take a few minutes. Please choose the language used for the installation process. This language will be the default language for the final system. So we'll just go ahead and click forward there. And obviously this looks exactly the same. I'm in Los Angeles time zone and we're using a US English keyboard. I don't know why there's an international with dead keys on there. That's just weird. I don't know why that's a format in the freaking forward buttons. Would you work? No, of course you won't work. Whatever. How do you want to partition the disk? Oh, this might take a couple seconds. This is an IDE hard drive. I think it's 60 gigs in this laptop. I think that's the drive capacity I put in this. If it finds the hard drive, come on. It's probably gonna find that NTFS partition if I had to guess. Yep, there you go, yay. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and use the entire disc. Now, as you can see, since I'm using this on a physical computer, and installing with a USB stick, you can see that the USB stick ends up becoming an option in and of itself. We're not gonna do that, but that's just there as a point of reference. So we're just gonna go ahead and format the whole hard drive. Here is the migration wizard. As you can see, it would give you the option to, if you're installing from a Windows drive and it's not formatted, it would show you your Windows user accounts and your passwords and or user accounts and stuff that you can create and transfer all of your pictures, documents, and all that stuff. But this doesn't have anything like that, so it's blank, of course. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out real quick. All right, my information is now filled in, so let's go ahead and, uh... oh no, oh no. All right, so now that I got the password correct, we can now go ahead and install. So this is probably gonna take, oh God, don't show the new hard drive. Oh, uh, nice. Nice. Good job, setup. <laughs> okay, so since the setup program doesn't know how to format a hard drive, we're just gonna do it for it. So we're just gonna use the genome Partition Editor, otherwise known as Gparted, and it keeps mounting the hard drive. Nice. Well, it's probably gonna need to mount the hard drive anyway, so that way it'll actually be able to modify the partitions. So as you can see, it keeps trying to make an extended partition here and then the Linux swap, which obviously it's not successful at, so we're just gonna go ahead and delete all these, and they're flagged and locked. Lovely, I thought we were supposed to do this. Okay, so can we just unflag these? Oh, there's flags. No, there's not any lock on them, so why are they locked? Because it's mounted, that's probably why, because it's mounted, so I'm out. Alright, apply. Whatever. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. Try this again. Okay, so clearly it cannot make an ext3 file system on this hard drive. I have no clue what's going on. I even went through and yeah, now it's set to unknown. We'll unmount the drive then and then format it to, I don't know, just format it as ext3. And it just, it just doesn't seem to be doing it. It's like it makes a click and it looks like it's trying to do it, although maybe this time it might actually be successful. But if this doesn't work and it somehow manages to bring back up the Windows install that's on the drive, which I'm hoping at this time it's not going to do that, I'm going to give up on the T43 and I'm going to go grab a different ThinkPad since this is just me off. Oh my god. Are you effing serious? We're finally gonna work. Wow, that only took like 5,000 tries. Yes. Finally. It actually does not have the Windows install on here. Can we finally install Ubuntu 7.04 on this computer without dinking around with drive partitions anymore? That would be really, really nice. Alright, well I'm at my wits end when it comes to this installation process on the T43. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, transition laptops here. I'm gonna go grab my uh, ThinkPad uh, T42. And we'll give this another go. 
because yeah, this is just not working. All right, so I've transitioned laptops to an IBM ThinkPad T42. This is the 15 inch laptop that was pretty much a identical uh, counterpart to the T41. Um, so the T42 is the bigger brother, or at least this one was the 15 inch version of the T42. They could have had a 14 inch and a 15 inch option, I don't know. Anyway, we are currently starting up. Just gotta give it a few seconds here. And hopefully this one has a better success rate. This one has a 40 gigabyte hard drive. So I don't know if that's gonna make any kind of a difference. I hope it does, crossing my fingers. So let's let this start up here. My plan is I'm gonna first start off with going into Gparted and just take out all the partitions. Just leave the drive as completely blank. And then I'm going to hop into the setup and see if it makes a difference. So hopefully I have a better success rate doing it that way rather than how I was doing it on the T43. No guarantees, but I hope that's how it's going to work. The only unfortunate thing is this has press marks in the LCD and the CPU isn't nearly as quick, but it looks as if... Ubuntu is using driver software that cannot be supported. Hmm, interesting. I got farther than last time with driver support. Uh, as you can see, laptop battery, 12 minutes until charged. That was not there before. So yeah, maybe we'll have a better luck uh, installing Ubuntu 7.04 on this system than we did on the T43. I think this one's gonna be a lot more compatible. So even though it is quite a bit slower, it should be functional. You can see there's just one great big NTFS partition there because I installed Windows XP on this computer. Again, this is a surrogate install. I don't care if I lose. So we're just gonna do this. And we should be, yep, immediately done. Good to go. I don't know, maybe the drive in that T43 is bad. It could very well be that it's bad. I don't know. It's not really that hard to change a hard drive in those, but it's kind of a pain when you don't have a caddy like both this and the other one do. So I don't know. Well, I'm gonna run through the setup process one more time and hopefully make it out alive on the other side. And... Awesome. So I think we are installing. All right, so I will come back once this is done. Oh my God, you do not understand how happy I am to see this screen. Let's restart now. Of course it beeps. All right, I will come back once we are booted off the hard drive. <laughs> it seems faster to start on the USB stick than it does on the hard drive. That's hilarious. But regardless, here we are at the desktop. I'm gonna look into this. I'm gonna connect this up to the Wi-Fi since we actually do have working Wi-Fi and it does have WPA support. That's WPA2 in this network. And I'll be right back. I love that network icon. Uh, I don't wanna create a default carrying right now. All right, and we're connected and we have a signal strength, although not very good, even though the router's way over there, just in the living room, but whatever. So this is one of the utilities. Uh, I gotta type in my password. That talks about restricted drivers, as I mentioned earlier. As you can see, this machine has an ATI graphics card. In this case, on the T42, it has a mobility Radeon 9800, I think it is. So it's obviously needing to be enabled. So let me try turning that on and uh, we'll see what we can do here. Did I press enable? I did enable. Strivers for required to fully utilize the 3D potential of ADI graphics cards as well as provide 2D acceleration of newer cards. Enable it. It's not enabling it for some reason. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it for this particular video. Anywho, um, we'll go ahead and open up uh, Firefox. I know this lighting is horrible where I'm at, but this is what we're going to have to deal with for the rest of this video. Because this screen is so dim that it's really hard to see it when it's over there. So, yeah. So here we are. Welcome to Ubuntu 7.04 Feasty Fawn. The usual home page that we have. What version of Firefox are we running here? I think it's like version, yeah, 2.0.0.3. So that's what we're running. 
And just to verify that we are online, we're gonna make a Google search for Ubuntu. And as you can see, it loads and we're working just fine. Although of course this website's a bit screwed up because the old Firefox, but it does work nonetheless. So this machine should have support for the desktop effects. Let's give that a go. Warning, desktop effects are an experimental feature in Ubuntu made available through the tech preview. They do not work correctly on all computers and may cause a number of unexpected side effects such as poor performance, loss of keyboard shortcuts, or rearranging workspaces. Well, you know what? I don't care. I want it enabled. Woo! And it actually works on this computer. Look at that. Ho ho ho! That is awesome! Uh, I bet you this wouldn't work in a virtual machine. Woo! That is so cool! Oh, man, I could have too much fun with this. Oh, wow. That is awesome. And there's actually a... Oh, God. <laughs> oh, look at that. That is so cool. Oh, that is so neat. Oh, I can't help but... I can't help but chuckle at that. That is so cool. Not gonna lie, although... There is some graphical glitching going on on the desktop with the leftover windows. It does tend to leave a bit of a glitch. But still, I, that's a small price to pay for that small little bit of entertainment. That is awesome. So those actually sort of work on this computer. I'm really quite surprised to see that. All right, what else? Let me take a look. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was going to take a look at that uh, set of games. So now that we have the fun, funny effects here of Compiz, let's go and check out Chess, which is one of the new games. Of course, I'm no good person at chess, but uh, let's see, eh, just do the normal settings there. As you can see, there is chess with the GNU open software agreements and stuff, and uh, I can't help but have fun with the, oh god, yeah, it is screen tearing bad because of the no, uh, no 3D driver, but I still can't help but have fun dinking with this window. That is so much fun to dink around with. That is awesome. And let's see, I wonder if the the GNOME control panel is under preferences, is it? I'm not sure. There's some kind of like control panel something or another that was added as far as I know, of course. But I'm not sure where that is. I know the restricted drivers or something that I can't fix because every time I enable that, it doesn't work. So that sucks. But man, that is just so fun to dink around with. Um... So my guess is, is that that's entirely missing. I wonder what the update manager says for this particular version of Ubuntu, just out of curiosity. It's probably going to just tell me, yeah, it doesn't work anymore. So that's unfortunate. I got one of these distros to say uh, upgrade to a newer release, and then I tried it, and it just aired out. So that's pretty funny. Uh, let's see. Disk usage analyzer. I wonder if that's under system and then uh, administration or something like that. There's some kind of disk usage thing in a jig. I'm not sure where that would be located. But either way. So I think that's it for this. As far as I can tell, that's about all I can really show. I suppose we'll check out the OpenOffice applications. Got a slightly different splash screen on it. OpenOffice 2.2. So long it takes to launch on this. Wait times, man. Not everybody had salt state drives back in the day, so you you had to wait for your software to load. Awesome. It works, and uh, no V-Sync tearing, at least. Not as bad as the one on chess. Um, yeah, open office. What is this? 2.2. Alrighty, cool. I believe there was a particular version that came with more wallpapers. I don't think this was one of them. Yeah, it just has the simple Ubuntu in it right now. All right. And then, of course, Evolution got a different icon as well. Sorry about the poor camera work for this video, guys. I was not expecting to have to do a video in freehand camera style, and I don't exactly do the best jobs with it. But hopefully this was something good enough to hold over the lack of a VM thing. 7.10 works just fine in a virtual machine. So I'm going to try it then and see if I'll have any better luck. And if I do, then that'll be awesome. But until then, I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. And I will uh, see you all in the next software review video.